and get some of these branches knocked back so I can drive my truck through here. Ah, that to help. Need to come down through here with the limb saw. Oh, hey guys. Welcome back to the Hands-On Channel. I'm glad you stopped by. I've been wanting to talk to you about something for a few days now. Uh, you know, I'm reminded of the whole balloon, but uh, what would you call it? The, the whole balloon conspiracy where uh, the Chinese, I guess, flew that balloon across the United States and Biden didn't do anything about it. And why am I reminded of that? Well, I'm sure you guys have heard there are drones the size of SUVs, they say. And if you don't know, that's the white buffalo back there, my uh, uh, 96 model uh, K2500 Suburban. It's a pretty big, pretty big vehicle. Uh, you know, they say there's drones out there the size of that. Now I realize it's way out of frame for you guys, so you're probably not getting the full scale of it, but you know, you've seen a Suburban. You've seen a 90s model Suburban. So, Supposedly, they're flying these drones around New Jersey area, and also I'm hearing that uh, there was another report like a couple of, I don't know, maybe it was a week or two ago now, where there were several drones spotted outside of a military base, just like hovering up there, uh, and they're saying on the news that they don't appear to be breaking any airspace laws, but... Uh, if you guys follow the channel, you know that I've been, I mentioned it in one of the videos, that I've been kind of drone shopping. I've been looking to get some different uh, camera angles and stuff like that uh, for my video content and things, to make things more interesting so that I can show you guys aerial views of my land and what projects I'm working on. And I see thousands of YouTubers doing this same sort of thing, right? And I guarantee you, out of those thousands, uh, probably about half or more have no idea that they're actually breaking the law by doing that. I did a little bit of investigation before I went and just, you know, pulled the trigger and bought a drone. And I realized that uh, very quickly that if you're going to make money on YouTube videos, you have to follow a certain set of rules. You have to get like a, uh, uh, basically a drone license, you know, and it's going to probably cost you 150 bucks or something like that. And you're going to have to go take a class or, or go take a test or whatever. And it's just this whole convoluted deal where it's like, come on, man, all I'm wanting to do is shoot videos on my own freaking property. And they want to be that anal about it, you know, and I guess the way they're finding these people is they're going onto their YouTube channels and then they go do a background check and find the FAA finds out that, um, you know, these people don't have a drone license. So then they you know, they crack down on them with the full might of the federal government. And, you know, a lot of these, I've heard a lot of these stories where guys are getting like $100,000 fines and stuff for shooting a freaking video on YouTube and profiting on their ad, ad uh, what do they call it, uh, Google ads or whatever, right? So anyway, all that being said, I know there are a hell of a lot of rules about drones. So I started looking into that stuff going, hey, you know, what kind of rules do I need to know about? Well, one of those rules is that you're not allowed to fly in certain kinds of airspace that's restricted airspace. And it's not right up next to the side of the military base where the fence is. It's way the hell over here, way away. You're not allowed to get anywhere near there because the military is smart enough to realize that even sitting right here on the edge of the property line, on the fence line, where I saw those drones uh, sitting there hovering around that military base, even that, those drones can, they, you know, they have high-tech cameras on them and sensors and things. They can zoom in, right? Just like I could turn my lens right here and zoom in on that Suburban and show you guys the full scale of that. Well, that drone that was parked up there that people were so suspicious about can do the same exact thing. So why on earth did not the United States military take those son of a bitches down? They were clearly violating controlled airspace, military airspace. And again, I heard these talking heads on TV saying, oh, well, they appear to be following the rules of the drones. They're not getting inside the Air Force Base restricted airspace. They have no idea, I guarantee you, because it's, again, there's like layers of, of what you're allowed to do. And, and uh, I'm not explaining it very well because I don't know all of the exact rules, but I know there are like ceilings on how high you can fly. Uh, one of these pilots that I heard a little bit of audio clip from was saying they were spotting drones at 50,000 feet. 
Private civilians, to my knowledge, are not allowed to fly above 400 feet. That's the ceiling, okay? Unless you get special permission from the FAA to break that rule. And so you're telling me that all these, suddenly all these drones have the permission to do that? I just don't believe it. Something else is going on. And then we had a congressman come out a couple of days ago and say that there's a mothership, an Iranian mothership off the East Coast that's like letting these things out and letting them fly all over the place. Is it Iranian? Probably not. They're probably uh, using that to, you know, drum up the... Uh, the war machine to, to get the support of the American people because, you know, we don't want people having drones flying around over us and stuff like that, right? So I have no idea who this is or what this is exactly. A couple of the videos that I've seen, I saw one in particular where a guy is just looking up in the sky and he's like, what the hell is this? And it's all these little dots and lights. They look like UFOs to me, okay? The way they're moving, they look like UFOs. So could this be some sort of a you know, UF, UAP, UFO cover up that the government is doing? Yes, it could. Do you guys know anything about Project Blue Book? Um, now I realize that uh, the, I don't know who put that out, but the series Project Blue Book, I highly recommend it. It's actually one of the best uh, TV series that I've seen in a very long time. Uh, it's got the guy from Game of Thrones, and I don't know who the other guy is, but, you know, it doesn't matter. It's a really uh, good, well-documented uh, case study based on all of the UFO stuff that was happening back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And basically, the United States uh, Air Force at that time was running this program called Project Blue Book, where they were sending out their top scientists and doctors. Uh, one of them's name is Heinrich or something like that. Uh, the star of that show and what blew my mind guys about this show was everything they were saying in these episodes was based on real accounts real stories that i have heard about for years and years and years on programs like art bell back in the day i don't know who do you guys listen to art bell still i mean i know he's gone now but i still like to go on to youtube and listen to some of his old uh broadcasts because the guy was just great. He would ask the right questions to these people. And, you know, he wasn't just sitting there um, to believe in everything hook, line and sinker. So he came at some of these people with, you know, a little bit of a challenging questioning and stuff like that. So that's what I loved about Art Bell. But anyway, I used to love to just sit there and turn that radio station on. You know, it usually came on at midnight and I'd be going to bed about, you know, 1230, one o'clock in the morning. And I'd turn that on, put my headphones on and listen to that as I fell asleep. And I know for a fact, I heard so many of those accounts from Pl Project Blue Book that I, I couldn't believe it when I was watching this show, how realistic everything seemed. Now, again, I get it. It's a Hollywood uh, reproduction or recreation of actual events. So, you know, I'm sure they took some liberties and different things that they did and said on that series. My point is this Project Blue Book's entire uh, purpose was not to prove what these ufo things were or what they are if you believe that sort of thing they were to disprove them they were to call it swamp gas to call it you know weather balloons to call it whatever the hell they had to call it to uh take the attention of the public away from that and put people's minds at ease so if you're one of these people at work that are like hey man i think these are ufos then your buddy over there is probably going to be like oh no no it's drones i have seen the pictures uh it looked like drones to me they had red and green red and blue lights on them and stuff like that and all this i mean come on guys if there really are ufos and aliens out there do you think they could not figure out that hey these guys all use like red and green lights to signal you know to to signal to other aircraft that they're in the air and to look like regular normal aircraft so again my point is is that you know these aliens if they exist you know have come all this way or whatever however they are however they're using this technology uh and they could easily turn on a red and a blue light or whatever to make people think that it's a you know a normal aircraft nothing to see here so am i saying it's ufos no i'm not i i tend to think it is drones but again i'm not there i'm not living in new jersey thank god I couldn't imagine living in a, uh, yeah, I'll just say it, a shithole city like that. I mean, my God, I would probably be suicidal if I lived there. And I hope none of you guys are. I suggest you get the hell out of there because there's too many people there. So anyway, 
that's the way I look at pretty much all of cities and towns and stuff like that. As soon as I go to town, I'm ready to get the hell out of town because it just it makes my skin crawl. I can't stand to be in large masses of people like that. It just it, again, it makes my skin crawl and I want to get back out here to my land where I feel comfortable and I feel like, you know, at least I kind of know what's going on and stuff. So anyway, this drone thing has got me pretty concerned because I mean, is it is it some Iranian mothership? I mean, for one thing, I've never even ha I've never even heard of an Iranian mothership. What in the hell? And if these things are actually the size of SUVs, then that would be one hell of a mothership, okay? I mean, we're talking more like an alien type mothership is what I think of. So as soon as that dude said that, that there's a mothership, an Iranian mothership, I'm like, what in the hell is going on? So I don't think any of us really knows. Could this all be a distraction? Could this be the Department of Defense doing some sort of a, you know, a new type of uh, drone experiment or whatever? Or could they have already had this technology and they're just doing it to cause a distraction so that we won't look at something else, whatever they're doing over here. Instead, we'll be looking over here at this drone bullshit. So I don't know what the answer is, guys. I'm just posing the question. Uh, every time I, you know, I, I, I kind of went through the same process when the Chinese spy balloon was going across the United States of America. And we did nothing about it. It feels very similar. Should we shoot one down? The United States military, I mean, yes, indeed. If we really don't know what's going on, we should shoot one down, at least one, maybe all of them, but at least shoot one down and you know, uh, at least check it out. See if we can figure out where the origin of this thing is. What, you know, what's it made of, you know, and something else is not lost on me either. Every single time throughout the history of, you know, uh, modern aviation, the United States military has had like, let's, let's give the example of the, uh, SR 71 Blackbird. You know, some people spotted that thing, uh, from the ground and had no idea what in the hell it was. They thought it was a UFO because it looked so different. Or the, you know, when the B-1 bomber, the big triangular, you know, boomerang looking thing, when that came out, I'm sure there were people that were saying, oh, I, seen, I saw a triangular UFO and stuff like that. So my point is, could this be some new level of, you know, um, what would you say? Uh, I don't know how to, how to describe it, where, but where you have all these drones linked together and you're able to fly them from a single source, you know, maybe that's some sort of a, uh, a thing that they're testing right now and they're just not, they're, they're keeping a tight lip because it's top secret, right? We don't want that information getting out. But ever since the Ukrainians weaponized drones against the Russians, uh, I've looked at them a lot differently, okay? Uh, drone warfare is a real serious possibility and uh, i mean it's already going on to a small level over in ukraine but my point is is that i think the military in the united states the people at the pentagon saw how effective that was and how hard it was to stop them and they're licking their chops and rubbing their greedy little hands together and thinking about all the money they're going to make on their newest weapon system that relies on you know autonomous drones or something like that where they can be a fleet of these drones that come in maybe they have explosives on them maybe they're just used for surveillance at this point who the hell knows but when you've got wide open borders like we've got and you've done it intentionally because biden did that when you've got you know just all sorts of problems that have materialized as a result of Biden's open border policies and the potential for who knows how many terrorist groups and, um, you know, uh, cells, they call them, all those terrorist cells that could be waiting right now for the call. Maybe they're flying them. I have no idea. And I don't think the media does either, because again, they're talking shit out of one side of their mouth saying, well, it doesn't appear that they're breaking any drone laws. Meanwhile, these things are flying at nighttime, they're flying very, very close to military bases and stuff like that. Close enough to me that it, it appears they're breaking the uh, restricted airspace rules. So that makes me think, because the military is not doing anything about it, that makes me think it is the military, our military, that's doing it. And with that, um, was he a congressman, I believe? I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy that said there's an Iranian mothership off the East Coast. 
could this Iranian mothership be actually be a American mothership? I mean, I wouldn't put it past them. I certainly wouldn't put it past them. So guys, let me know down in the comments, what the hell do you think this is? And why is the Biden administration not even acknowledging it or doing anything about it to stop it, not giving the authority or the authorization to shoot one down and investigate it and figure it out? Or, you know, I don't care, get a net and hang it off the bottom of a helicopter or whatever you have to do if you don't want to shoot one down, figure out a way that you can catch one of these things and dissect it, you know, reverse engineer it and figure out who it belongs to. What's the origin of this thing? Of course, that may be hard to do today considering all electronical parts come from China so I don't know how you'd distinguish one from the other I mean unless there's some kind of like when they had bomb makers that had the bomb makers fingerprint or whatever on it they could find their signature unless there's something like that that's really unique uh, to the way that the Iranians for example or the Chinese build drones I don't know how you distinguish them between any other drone that someone built in, as a hobbyist in their basement so um, yeah, and there's been a lot of other stuff where Congress is trying to crack down on uh, DJI particularly. They're, they're like the leading manufacturer of uh, what they call prosumer grade. I hate that word. I hate it when they make up words like that. Uh, so basically consumer upper level um, drone equipment is pretty much dominated by this company DJI. And if you don't know anything about them, they're obviously a Chinese company. That's where everything and all the drones come from. But for whatever reason, Congress has specifically intentionally targeted DJI alone, which is very weird because all these other drones come from China as well. And if they could be used to, you know, send information back to China, let's say I get a drone and I'm out here flying it around and somehow that thing links up to the satellite and pings a, you know, sends some of it back to China so they can see what I'm seeing. Um, again, DJI is not the only one. There are, there are dozens of these Chinese imported drone companies. So again, you know, too little, too late. It's like the Congress is trying to do something about it. And on one hand, I can see that as sort of a good thing, sort of a good intention. But again, it reminds me, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. So, uh, you know, it's like, again, everything they do just screws things up worse. It got so intense there uh, towards the end of the election and stuff that, I mean, I was just basically 24 hour news cycle stuff all the time. I just can't take it all the time. I have to take a break from time to time. So that's what I did. And the only reason I'm talking about this drone thing is again, it could be a national security issue. It could be either someone spying on us again, like the Chinese did with their spy balloon that we allowed to fly all the way across the country, or it could be again, some hobbyist that's just out there, you know, trying a new thing, or it could be the Department of Defense, or it could be UFOs. I mean, it, I guess technically it is a UFO because we don't really know exactly what it is yet. It's just people are assuming they're drones. And I'm sure on one of the videos, the, one, the only video that I saw where this drone, this big drone flies through a neighborhood fairly low. And the one that I could say, okay, I could see why they're saying this looks like a SUV flying through the air because it was massive. And the one that I saw, I thought I heard uh, some like propeller noises, you know, prop noises, right? as it was flying by, which makes me think it is actually a real drone and, you know, not some alien UFO or something like that. So anyway, pretty wild. But one thing, you know, I want to just say this as a public service announcement. Let me tell you something. If you're ever out and you see something really weird that you want to record, do us all a favor. Don't hold your phone in vertical mode. I freaking hate that crap. You can't see all the, all the picture. It's just, it's awful trying to watch videos in vertical mode. And I don't know why people do that, but still to this day, I see people and I, I get it. Certain platforms, you know, like I guess TikTok, I don't really go there, but some of these platforms require you to use that vertical format. And if you're going to put it on YouTube, let's put it this way, make it to where I can blow it up and look at it in full screen and not have two black bars on each side of the thing. That crap drives me crazy. 
So if you're ever going to capture something, all you got to do is before you hit record, turn your phone to landscape mode to where it's this way and then hit record and it will record in landscape mode. That way, if anything happens over here or if you need to blow it up or whatever and get a close up of this damn thing, you can. But anyway, <laughs> mini rant concluded that just I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. What do you guys think this is? Is it aliens? Is it UFOs? I mean, obviously it is. Is it the DOD? Is it Iranian mothership connection? <laughs> <laughs> These people are insane. We live in an insane asylum and the inmates actually run it. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I'm going to get back at it out here, uh, continue on. I'm just cleaning up my little path here. So my suburban, the white buffalo doesn't rub on it as it goes down through here, but I'm going to continue on. I hope you guys are doing well out there and getting your projects done. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to update you guys pretty soon. We're, we're still going forward on the cabin plan. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the pier set before winter and all this before it really kicks in, but we're trying. We're just keeping putting, uh, we just keep on putting one foot in front of the other and see what we see. Of course, hopefully it'll get a lot easier when prices come down after Trump takes office. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Until then, we'll see you next time.